This is a pecan that I took down about a month ago. I forgot to put the time lapse in that video when I took it down. I like going back and watching the time lapses because you can kind of see how the tree reacts to the cuts and watch the limbs as I'm cutting it. When I cut the ends off, you know, watch how much they'll pick up and move as far as that removing that weight out there on the ends of them. And it's uh, it's always pretty good to, to see like that one right there, how it picked up. And that tree's constantly relaxing up. See that one? See how much the tree moved? So those limbs are like a big giant guy wires hanging out there and balancing that tree the whole time. And what always amazes me is as you trim it out and you get it all the way down to the spar, when it's nothing but a spar standing up there, it makes you wonder how the tree even stands in the first place. Because once it's just a spar standing there, you can literally take your hand from the basket of the lift right there and you can put it out there on that spar and you can move that spar all over the place i mean it, to certain trees you can you can move it a foot or more easy by just kind of uh, pushing on it and that just goes to show how important the uh, limbs are in the balance of that tree this tree was really large uh, we didn't have hardly any room to work on uh, we there's a building right there and there's concrete all the way to within just a few feet of the base of this tree. And then of course the house is right there. And it, it wasn't, a, wasn't a lot to, to work with. And of course a uh, pretty good sized tree too. So on these uh, big trees like this or any kind of tree, uh, you know, if you're making your cuts and you're wanting to fool with uh, tree work, you know, always remember Small cuts equal small problems. Big cuts equal big problems. A lot of times it's really tempting to want to take a, a big big cut, but it's your better beneficial to take a take a small one. Sometimes my, my rule of thumb is a lot of times if it fits, it shifts, you know, kind of deal. But sometimes that's not the best thing to do. And you could see in the first part of it how many redirects I had on my rigging route as I was going. So we're about to pull the spar over now. I've actually got a block over here in this hackberry that's to the right. You can see line coming down and it comes back to the mini excavator where we could uh, back up with it. Because again, there was just no room. We had about, I don't know, 10 foot that you could move the mini and I'm pulling the lift out of the way there now, getting it gone. And this is when I was able to back the dump trailer in there and loaded uh, the chunks from it up in the up in the back of the dump trailer, um, a lot goes into uh, these tree jobs. Whether it's me doing it or whoever it is doing it, it's a uh, lot of lot of thought process in it. So right here, this is a stump that uh, Chris and I we took this tree down back uh, summer ago, and then uh, they wanted me once I got the stump grinder, they wanted me to come back and we traded on grinding the stump and. It uh, started grinding on this thing, started raining on me, and I uh, put my raincoat on and went ahead and, and got after it. So uh, these, the, and this stunt was like 50-something inches on the on the ground right there. So this next clip is a uh, dump trailer dumping some wood. So hope you enjoy today.
Oh, Cameron took a lick. She's good, though. So the video I filmed on Friday when the storm was coming in, I was going to kind of give you a little update on that deal. Wind got really bad here. A lot of people ended up going without power. We we were okay. We Our power never went out right here. But So that was Friday morning, and then there were still people without power here. Uh, yesterday morning, I think about mid-morning, about lunch, they finally got everybody's power back on. But it, it, it did a lot of tree damage. I got a call Friday. I ended up going and working two trees uh, by myself. Both of them were bad, uh, real bad. I didn't have to do the cleanup on them, thank goodness, because uh, where I was at, it was really, really wet. The ground is just completely saturated, rotten as can be right now. You almost can't even hardly walk across the yard right now. It's, it's so wet. So work where you work at, you're real limited on what, what you can do and what you can get away with. But I went and I did those two and I filmed a video with you. I may see it tomorrow, but two very uh, technical, very dangerous trees and got them, got them done, got them cut up for the guy. He's going to do the cleanup on them again. Thank goodness. Cause I, I just, I didn't want to uh, do the cleanup on them. And then I went and looked at one while ago. The reason why this video is a little bit late a guy called and he's got a tree and it clay rooted the tree in his yard and the, the where this area where this is the the yards are the zero lot line yards so the lots are like not even a tenth of an acre so the houses are like jammed right up to one another no yards whatsoever and there's trees all in this place man they just kind of built the houses just stuck them in there however they could get them in and this tree clay rooted, and it's a pretty large oak. It caught a gum in his yard. It's done broke the root crown on that gum. It's got that gum bowed over pretty bad. Both of them trees go slap across his neighbor's yard. And then there was an oak, another big oak. And the tree that clay rooted is actually lodged and hung into that big oak, which is, oh, by the way, all overhanging the not the next door neighbor's house but then the next next door neighbor's house very complicated situation uh very tight quarters getting into the next door neighbor's yard is not gonna happen it's i mean it you you can't even hardly get in that yard with a push mower the backs of the yards they got water on on them they're about knee deep in water um me and another tree guy here has already looked at it. And so I called him and we were kind of discussing things, you know, everybody's pretty cool. The, the people that own the tree, of course, they're freaking out. They're, well, they're not freaking out, but they, they want it done. They wanted it done yesterday. Of course you can't. And they, I talked to him, you know, and you can't line everything up on something like this to get it done that quick. But I'm not sure if we'll, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, the other fellow here, he's going to call me about one today and we're going to kind of discuss things. But, uh, hey, uh, that one's going to be a, uh, and going to be a toughie. I'm telling you, a, a serious toughie. A lot of, uh, lot of liability in, uh, in that tree. Luckily, when it hit in that oak it didn't compromise the root crown on it on any that tree is still solid standing there so we'll kind of we'll talk about it and see what uh what we come up with do can get a crane in there from the other street and uh but it's going to take a crane and a couple of climbers to to be able to make it all work and all all get it done so uh 
of course you're dealing with wooden fences on every on every yard too there's a wooden fence so good good complicated one man but there's uh again there's tree damage everywhere there's several houses that got hit by trees here a uh, lot of power line damage ripped services out of houses there's i mean pretty much just about every road you drove on you could you could see tree damage uh, somewhere had the trees been fully foliaged out it, it would have really put some trees on the ground here and what this as wet as the ground is right now so Hope y'all have a great day and enjoy the, the time lapse. Like I said, I pointed out several things in the time lapse. It's uh, kind of cool to uh, pay attention to with the trees. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.